Welcome to our review on making ethanol. First thing we need to know then is what a renewable raw material is. So when we're referring to something that's a renewable raw material, we're talking about one that's going to be replaced because they're not going to run out. So this would be a great example as things that come from plants, for example, because once they've actually been used, we can just grow some more. Therefore, they don't run out. The first way in which we can make ethanol is in a fermentation reaction. So this is where we're going to take some yeast because yeast contain enzymes that are able to convert glucose into carbon dioxide and ethanol. And then we're going to mix that with something that contains the glucose. And this usually comes from plants. So we start off with glucose, add in the yeast, and they will form carbon dioxide and ethanol, which is our alcohol. And I've given you the balance symbol equation at the bottom there to show you how that actually happens. Fermentation is a reaction that you've hopefully carried out in the classroom. So you'd have used a setup very similar to the diagram here, where we've got a conical flask which contains our glucose solution and some yeast. That's got a bung with a delivery tube attached to it, and that goes into a test tube containing lime water. Hopefully we remember lime water will test for carbon dioxide, and it goes from colourless to a cloudy or milky colour. So that what we'll find is, as this actual reaction occurs within our conical flask, we make carbon dioxide, which turns our lime water from colourless to cloudy. When we're carrying out a fermentation reaction, because it does use yeast, which are living organisms, then we do need to be mindful about the temperatures that we're using. So if our temperature is too low, then our yeast cells will become inactive and fermentation will happen at a very, very low rate, if at all. If the temperature is too high, then the enzymes within our yeast are going to become denatured. And this usually occurs at temperatures above 50 degrees Celsius. So if the enzymes are denatured, the glucose as the substrate will no longer fit the active site and therefore the process can't occur. So what we do to ensure that we have the optimum rate of fermentation is carry it out usually at 35 degrees Celsius and at normal atmospheric pressure. We do have an alternative available to us on how to make ethanol, which is using non-renewable raw materials. And they are named non-renewable raw materials because we're using them faster than they can be replaced. And as a result, they will eventually run out. And the example for this one is ethene, which actually comes from crude oil. So using these non-renewable raw materials, we can make our ethanol through what's called a hydration reaction. So we start off with our ethene and we hydrate it to make ethanol. So I've given you the word and symbol equation there. So ethene plus water in the form of steam will make ethanol. It is a reversible reaction, so we do need to be mindful of the conditions that we're using. So in order to actually generate our ethanol, we will use 300 degrees Celsius, a pressure of 60 atmospheres and a catalyst of phosphoric acid. So one thing they could ask you to do is to carry out a comparison between the two techniques that we can use to make ethanol and justify your choice for a particular process. So all I've got here for you is a little table that summarizes a few of the key features about fermentation and hydration as processes to make ethanol. So we can see cost of raw materials is low in fermentation, but high for hydration. So obviously it's an advantage for our fermentation, disadvantage for hydration. The conditions for fermentation is a moderate temperature and normal pressure, therefore there are limited costs associated there. Whereas for hydration, we need a high temperature and high pressure, which is more costly. The energy requirements tie into that because fermentation, they're low, whereas hydration, they are high. The rate of reaction is low in fermentation, so it will take quite some time to make enough ethanol, whereas in hydration, it's a very high rate of reaction, so we can generate more product in a shorter space of time. Percentage yield is low in fermentation, but high in hydration. And then the purity of our product in fermentation, again, this is low because we need to filter it and then carry out fractional distillation to just have our ethanol, 
whereas in hydration we've got no byproducts so that means that we've got a high purity of the product hopefully at the end of this video you can explain how we can make ethanol through both a fermentation reaction and also a hydration reaction you should also be able to summarize some of those key features about fermentation and hydration and then select which process will be best in a given scenario.